The Loire Valley in central France. Val de Loire, the World Heritage Site, Val de Loire, protected by UNESCO, one of the world's largest World Heritage Sites. It's not hard to see why, when you come to a place like Chenonceau, this place is protected as a World Heritage Site. It is beautiful, it is stunning. All year round, it doesn't matter when you come here. And what I want to do with these series of vlogs that I'm going to do is show you different castles here in the Loire Valley. There are literally hundreds of them. Not all are publicly accessible, but some are. So now I'm going to take you to some of them to show you what you can do photographically with places like this castle here, Chenonceau. The Chateau de Chenonceau, the castle Chenonceau that's behind me, was originally an old mill and at some point they built on top of it to create the castle that's behind me. It's had a, a bit of a chequered history, it's been bombed in the Second World War and all sorts of other things used as a hospital. And also during the Second World War, for example, that side was German occupied territory and here was free France. But now, of course, we are free to roam, we are free to photograph it as we please. You do have to pay, of course, to go that side in the castle grounds, but this side, you're very much free to roam. This area here is easily accessible. You just drive off the main road and then you can park in some woods and then you just walk up here. And there's basically a cycle path as well. So those of you that like cycling can come here. And as I've already seen today, a cyclist go past going somewhere on his way. Photographically, there's many things you can do with this beautiful castle here. You do have to think about the time of year that you're going to come though, because it's not as simple as you might think. That direction is southwest going up to northeast. Think about that when it comes to what time of day you want to come here, what time of year. You can come here any time of year, but it depends on what it is you want to do. If you want a fiery sunset onto the castle, you're best to come in winter. If you want a fiery morning in the summertime is the best time to come here and photograph it. But as you can see, at any time of the day, it looks beautiful, whether you want to photograph it or not. Now, at the moment, there's actually the River Cher, which is by the side of me, seems to be quite low. Sometimes you can get down and actually get a shot looking down the river. You can also go up in a hot air balloon and get a different aerial shot of this place. You have to be careful if you want to fly drone here because there's height restrictions. I can't remember what they are off the top of my head, but do bear that in mind. But let's show you what I might do with Chateau de Chenonceau and how I might photograph it. I'm not going to show you every single angle and every intimate detail that you can photograph of this place, but just to make you aware that there are some places, as I said, you're going to have to pay. Over there is the entrance. I think it's something like 10 euros or so. As I said here, this cycle path here, this pathway, anybody can come here any time of day. That makes it perfect for us photographers because Honestly, I prefer this side of the castle rather than being over there in the grounds of the castle. The grounds are really nice. Photographically though, I prefer being here. You've got much more of a reflection of the castle in the River Cher, either in the afternoon, sunset, depending on time of year, or the other side. I could, if I wanted to, go down to the riverbank at the moment. It's quite empty, the Cher. I've been there before though, I've done it. I'm not going to take my time. I'd have limited time this afternoon to do that. But let's show you this particular facade and what it is that I'm going to do with it. This is one of the angles that you can do. Now you have to be careful when you do this angle for the very simple reason. There's a wall that goes up against the shell and you have to make sure the wall is not in your image when you're doing it. So here, for example, I've got my tripod on the edge of the wall, made sure it's balanced so it's not going to tip over and go into the, into the shell and I've put on the front of my camera the 24mm tilt shift. Yes, you can use uh, a wider lens and then get the converging verticals back in Photoshop or Lightroom. I prefer to get it in camera. You'll also notice that it looks as if the image is overexposing. That's because I'm going to blend the exposure. One of the problems that you get when photographing castles such as Chenonso is when the sun hits the facade, you get this very high contrast scene. So therefore, 
you've got to be aware that you're going to either have to use a graduated filter or you're going to have to take two exposures and then blend them together. I'm going to take two exposures and then blend them together. I do have my grads with me, but because of the angle of the sun, you can actually see it's that. I will be using a very steep-sided grad in order to get it. I could get it, but I'd prefer to blend. In this case, I'll have a lot more control over the image. Basically, at this time of year, you've probably got at least a two-stop difference between the foreground and the background there. So that's what you're gonna to have to be looking at when you photograph Chenon. So you can see as well though, just to mention 24 mil, it's very tight crop there within the cast itself. So you can see on the edge, there's a little bit of space on the edge and there's a little bit of space on the other edge where that turret is there. And also what you need to be aware of is just up here, there's lots of overhanging trees at times. So just be aware of that as well when you come to Chenon. So let's show you the other scene that you could do there's many of course but let's show you the other one it requires a long lens in order to get it previously i talked about a long lens shot or shinozo here is where you can do a long lens shot now i'm lucky today that actually the share is quite empty so i've been able to come out into the riverbank and actually get a shot looking almost directly face onto it. However, just back there you can go and then you can still get your long lens shot looking down towards the castle. Be very aware though, it's over 200 millimeters looking down there, really filling the frame with the castle or unless you've got a crop sensor getting in close because it's by this distance here, you're getting quite far away and you're getting the river coming round in like this. So just be aware of that when you're wanting to do this long lens shot here it's a beautiful view one of the nice things is is when you get here if it's a still day like it is today the share can be very flat and so they therefore you get a really nice reflection of chanonso in the river share let me just turn the camera around and you'll see there's the long lens shot looking down towards chanonso you can see beautiful light there shame that there's not more color in the trees most of it's gone now but that's okay i can come here again next year you can see though what you're going to get now what you have to be aware of compositionally are a couple of things the light the direction of the light on this side of the castle is afternoon evening depending on the time of year and then the other thing you're going to have to be aware of compositionally is where you're going to put the horizon because you've got the chimney on the right hand side the southern side of the castle and you can either choose to cut it off and maybe go there with the castle or you can do like I've done and it's off center. So I might adjust it, I might see what it is that I can do. Another thing you can do is maybe a bit of an abstract image where you get your 100 to 400, if you've got 100 to 400, go right in to the castle and cut out the sky, crop out the sky and get a shot like that. Castle number two, Maurichard, Chateau de Maurichard. Behind me is the town of Maurichard and then up on the hill that you can see to my right is the Chateau de Maurichard. A ruin built originally in the 11th century and then taken apart under the orders of Henry IV in the middle of the 15th century, I think it was. Beautiful looking castle. You can see very, very old castle though. You can go and visit it if you want to. I've never actually visited it. I've more been used to trying to get a picture of the, the castle from across the river. So you can go this side, or you can go the other side of a 15th century bridge that takes you from one side of the River Cher to the other side. Let's show you the hindrances, let's say, of shooting from this side of the 15th century bridge. And then let's go and look at the other side and see how well we fare on that particular side of the bridge. A very simple shot looking across the river Cher towards the town of Maurichard. You can see now there's the bridge there, the 15th century arched bridge. There's the castle on top of the hill. What bothers me though is you've got the church spire directly in front of the castle. The other thing you have to have is patience here because there's a traffic light just before the bridge. And so at times you might be, as you can see now that's passing across the bridge, be getting lorries and other 
vehicles that just, for me, intrude into the shop. What can you do? Get here early in the morning, one thing, maybe late at night, probably not necessarily going to work, but it's things that you need to think about. What do you want in your shot? What's going to make it and what's going to break it? So for example, I'm looking right now and thinking, I could just about get a shot without cars like that because there's a little bit of the roofs of the cars coming there. A little bit frustrating, but what can you do? That's just how it is. So you can see, as I said, there's cars going across on there's a white roof van that's not quite in the picture, but it's going to be in the picture. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a pain. Now, the other thing that's good about this place is it doesn't matter what time of year you come here, you can take a picture of this place because basically you're looking east-west. So in the morning, you're going to get the sunrise coming up in the summer over there, in the winter there, summer sunset over there, and then winter sunset looking this way, illuminating the castle as it goes down. Now what I'm going to do is you've seen where the bridge is, I'm going to go to the other side of the bridge, just have a quick look, see if there's something there that I can do, and if not, then I'm moving on somewhere else to show you another castle. Now before anyone mentions it, and I know my audience, I know someone out there will mention it, it's like, why don't you get closer to the bridge and then you can avoid the church spire interfering with the dungeon, basically what's left of the castle up there. I've done just that. I just looked at it and thought, yeah, actually, not too bad. It's not too bad. It is a lot wider angle, though, the shot. And what you have to be aware of, again, is the cars that are going over there. You've got to choose your time when the traffic is going over and the vehicles. You just have to, to be patient to get the shot. So I've got a kind of a, a wide angle shot, I'd say. It's less than 50 mil. It's at about 40 mil or so looking up to the the old dungeon keep there i am still going to go across the other side of the road which is just there and we'll see what difference that makes all i will say is going the other side of the road at this time of day is it going to be preferential ah, honestly no i prefer having things illuminated having that nice side light yes i'll get the castle side lit from the other side of the road but the bridge will be in deep shadow at this time of day You can see the shot behind me now. Why I do what I do with the composition that I do and also the light. For me, composition and light go together. They all are part of the same thing. Right now, yes, you've got the chateau, the church, the town lit up with the afternoon sun, the late afternoon sun. However, this side of the bridge isn't. There's some light coming through it, but it's just not great. It's better to be here in the earlier part of the day in the morning in order to capture it properly and to get it looking a lot nicer than it is now. Yes, it looks nice in one half of it, but I don't want half, I want the whole package. I want everything to be looking good. Have I got a shot? Oh, of course I've got a shot. I'm going to show you what it looks like. You can see why it is that I wouldn't necessarily come here at this time of day, but I'm showing it to you just to demonstrate to you what it is that I'm doing. Behind me is the Chateau de Montpoupon, probably a castle you've not really heard about. There's so many in the Loire Valley, and a lot of them, they're very much at the top of people's tongues when they, they want to think of Loire Valley castles. There's Chenonceau, as we've seen today, there's Chambord, there's Amboise, there's, there's Saumur. There's so many different castles that one isn't necessarily better than the other. It's just if you know your local area, you know what's there. So as I said, that's Mont Poupon. It's a 13th to 15th century castle, an old fortress that's now in the hands of a family and has been in the hands of that family since the 19th century. You've got a couple of different angles you can do on it. Of course, you can visit the castle as well. It is one of the castles that you can come to visit. If you're here on a rainy day, the castle's open, then certainly go and visit. You can do this angle here. At the, at the moment, the setting sun is that way. We're getting into winter. You've got over there, there's another view of the castle as well. So there's different angles you can do. The good thing is, it's an all-year shot to come here to do, not, potentially, not necessarily this angle or that angle over there, but just because of the way the castle faces, you can get a good shot pretty much any time of the year. 
Sadly, there is a bank of cloud that is coming across the horizon there that is covering up the sun at the moment. Am I going to get some really nice light on the castle? No, I'm not, but at least I can show you that the castle is here, that you can come to Chateau de Montpoupon and then photograph it. Now, it's only like 15 minutes maybe from Maurichard, so it's not very far at all. All of the th castles that I've shown you today, all of them are within easy driving distance of one another, all easily done within a day. So let's show you what I'm going to do with Montpoupon, even though the light has sadly disappeared there's still something that can be done. Okay, I've got my long lens on, I've got the 100 to 400 on. Happily, the sun is peeking out from below the cloud bank and is illuminating the castle. So I had started to film the sequence and thought, no, I need to get it with the sunlight just to make sure I've got it before I show you what I'm doing. It's quite a tight shot though. And the reason is, is because this part of the castle is happily not under renovation but if I turn the camera you'll see the renovation that's going on there so what I've had to do is basically just say right I don't want that part of it and then I want that part of it let's come down and then there's my composition there so I'm not overly happy with it but it, it's not too bad I do know and I have seen images of this place where the field here has had different crop in it at different times of year. It doesn't look as if it's had anything in it though for quite a long time. But uh, yeah, there you go. That's the Chateau de Montpoupon. Beautiful. As I said, the other thing you can do actually is go this way. So basically, I'm just stood on the edge of a road and you can get another view of the castle. But at the moment, with all those works going on, it's not a view you would really want. I've never actually done this shot. This is the first time I've been this side of the castle. I'm liking it, it is really nice, but it is quite an awkward shot in some respects with the angle that you've got to have on. And also what I've just noticed is, is behind this tree here, that's the main road, again with composition, make sure that you see what it is traffic wise, it's coming along that road. When you've got an old medieval castle like this, an old fortress, the last thing you want is some lorry in the background just make it look as good as it is, as nice as it is, because it is beautiful, beautiful castle. The Chateau de Montpoupon. So there's three very different castles that you can come and photograph if you come to the Loire Valley, either on holiday or maybe even to live one day. The Chateau de Chenonceau, the Chateau de Montrichard and the Chateau de Montpoupon all within easy driving distance of one another or if you like cycling then you can cycle here as well. It's very very easy to cycle around here. Lots of space on the roads and there's lots of cycle tracks as well and also for example there's something called the Loire à Velo. So there's many many things you can do around here. Chateaus, vineyards, all sorts of stuff. But definitely, this is a series I'm going to continue showing you more castles of the Loire Valley, showing you how I might approach photographing them and throughout different times of year. Hopefully you've enjoyed what it is that I've quickly done this afternoon. This isn't actually what I was going to be doing. If you have, then make sure you subscribe down there. Click on the notification bell up there for any new videos that I upload. Thanks again. See you again soon, sometime, somewhere, at the moment in France.